Getting to the top by Carla Blaschka. If only I could make it to the top, I thought. I took another step, one foot up, the other planted beside it. Michael took one step up behind me. He was massaging my neck, being my personal trainer in this marathon. He had taken off work to be with me. We were passed up and down by others, but I didn't care. My goal was the top. It didn't matter if others made it before me. I took another step, one foot, then the other. Michael moved up one step behind me, not hurrying me, his thumbs making circles on my spine. I had gotten the call this morning. I had stayed at my friend Cher's after leaving Greg last night. We had fought, or at least I had gotten upset over his telling me that he wanted to break up the band, stop going on the road. I wasn't ready to stop to give up on my dream, so I started arguing with him, screaming, really, and the last words I heard my husband say before I slammed out of our apartment were, I am emphatic that I have not made a choice here. Greg always was a little pedantic when stressed. Great guitar player, though. I always got a visceral surge in my gut and going right on down when I heard him play. He had brought home peaches last night. He had been delivering fresh peaches to a store in Juneau when I first met him. He had thrown me one as I was leaving, and I bit into it right then, right there. It was soft and ripe, and the juice ran down my chin, and seeing that, he came over to my car. We were soon making plans to meet later that night at the used bookstore to watch a film. It had peaches in it, too, so they had become our thing, our secret code for saying, I love you. My last action against my husband before I slammed out the door last night was to throw the peaches at his head. Thank God they missed and hit the wall. It was Michael who called me this morning. He liked to check out the 911 calls on his computer and he spotted our address. I called in and they told me. They told me where to go, so here I was, planting one foot in front of the other, not wanting to go any faster, not wanting to die any sooner. Right now, I was married, still a lead singer in my husband's band. When I got to the top of the stairs, I would be a widow, and let's face it, unemployed. The immediate future was a wasteland, and I didn't want to go there. Come on, one more step, Michael murmured. I took another step. The coroner was very bland, very matter-of-fact. The body was burned, but not so much the face. They thought it was the smoke from the carpet that had killed him. He had been smoking in bed, something I would not have allowed if I had been there. They hadn't done the autopsy yet, but the EMTs had seen a bottle of scotch on the nightstand. She had uncovered his face so I could identify the body. I pointed to his chest. There was a lump under the sheet. I wanted to know what it was. His arm, she said. The arm was locked into position. He had been holding something against his chest when he died, said the coroner. I asked her what. A peach, she replied. And over the roaring in my ears before I hit the floor, I heard her quietly deliver my epitaph. For some reason, your husband was clutching a bruised peach to his heart, and he died. Thank you.